Welcome to Christian Overcomers, and thank you for joining us for this prophecy update. Go back where you came from. The controversial tweet by President Trump. You know, for those who think this was an unchristian thing to say or it was very horrible, it shows they've never read their Bible, at least not with any understanding. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say that we are to put up with strangers or foreigners who hate our country. That's absurd. In fact, the Bible warns us not to allow foreigners to become citizens unless they respectfully assimilate into our culture. As it is written here, let's check this out. Leviticus 18 verse 26 says, You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, now check this out, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. What does that say there? It says there that strangers, foreigners, must assimilate into the culture. They must follow the laws and customs of the land. But these four ladies here, you know, uh, one of them wasn't even born here, and others, their ancestors came here from other places. Um, I don't know if they were first or second generation or what they were. But nevertheless, the law applies to both the citizen and the non-citizen. One born in the land and one not born in the land. Hey, if, 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 if you're going to remain in the land, you have to assimilate. You have to be part of the culture. Traditional American culture. If a stranger cannot assimilate into our nation under God, then they should not be allowed to reside here or become a citizen. That, I mean, that's common sense. Would you? I mean, think about this. Would you let someone into your house that hates you and your family and wants to destroy you? Well, that's what we do here in America. We allow people into our house that hate our family and want to destroy us. And if you read in the beginning of Leviticus 18, you'll also find that God warns his people not to follow the doings of the Egyptians or the Canaanites. That's what God referred to up here as the abominations, okay? Child sacrifice, sexual immorality, homosexuality, you name it. All these things are done in these third world countries today where where Ilhan Omar comes from and where some of these others uh, came from as well. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe not them themselves, but their parents or their grandparents. But they, they've never learned to love our country. Either their parents didn't teach them or something went wrong with our um, immigration policy. I mean, we can't let people into our house that hate us and want to destroy us. Can we love them in other ways? Yeah, we can share with them the gospel. We can send missionaries over to their countries, but we don't have to let them come here and destroy our house. Nowhere in the Bible does it require that we have to do that. That is an unchristian statement. And, you know, Satan loves to twist the scriptures. He tried to twist. He actually used scripture against Christ. In Matthew chapter 4. But Christ set him straight by putting the scriptures back in context. Satan takes the scriptures out of context. And Jesus put the, puts the scriptures back in context. And as Christians, we ought to do the same as well. You know, you hear a lot of the liberal leftists will say, Oh, the Bible says you got to be kind to the stranger. Kind to the stra foreigner. Isn't that what the, it is about being a Christian? But then they support abortion. Um, they support homosexual marriage and every other abomination that God, that God detests. And they tell us what the Bible says. Now, the Bible tells us to be nice to the strangers, nice to the foreigners. But he does not require us to be. In fact, he tells us to reject the stranger or the foreigner that would want to come in and destroy our culture and pull us away from God. Okay, so in the beginning of Leviticus 18, you'll find out that God warns his people not to follow the doings of the Egyptians or the Canaanites. Why? Because they were pagan countries. They were equivalent to 
to today what we call third world nations. They were corrupt. They were immoral. And God didn't want their culture exported into his nation. And that's exactly what we've done. We've we've, um, imported their cultures and their ways into our nation. And that's how people like Ilhan Omar can get elected. Because uh, we've, we've allowed a lot of non-assimilatable Somalians into America. They don't love America. In fact, uh, many, uh, I, I uh, while in the military, I was guarding during one of our um, orange alerts. I was guarding a, um, a water treatment facility and the airport. And the policeman there told me, that after 9-11 happened, all the Somalians, they were, many of them were taxi cab drivers, were dancing on top of their taxis, celebrating 9-11, celebrating the attack upon our country. How can we allow this to happen? Are we stupid? It's because we've got gullible, ignorant Christians who know nothing about God's word. All they think, they think of the Bible and they think, just love everybody, turn the other cheek, love everybody. And they don't understand that all of those statements that they, that they love to quote, all those verses they love to quote must be taken in their proper context. Okay. Must be taken in their proper context. Continuing on. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you and the land is defiled that the land spew you not out also when you defile it as it spewed out the nations that were before you. You know, God even says, you know, the things that are done in these other countries are detestable. They're abominable. So abominable that God says the land itself pukes them out. boy, you know, I don't like the way God talks here. Well, you don't have to because you don't have to go to heaven. But I tell you what, I love the way God talks because it's the truth. If we, you wonder why these third world countries remain third world countries. Well, it's because of the abominations that are committed there. For if they were to turn to God as a people and as a nation, and quit doing their abominations, those countries would flourish. It doesn't matter where they're located. God would bless them. In another place it says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. But instead, instead of uh, you know wanting to remain one nation under God and reject these uh, foreign cultures from invading our nation, our people, in the name of Christ... Say, let them in. We love them. Let's import their culture. You know, this is great. This is wonderful. And now it's getting to the point where the land will spew us out if we don't put a stop to this. Okay? If we let, I'll explain this again. If we let unassimilated people from third world countries to freely come over here, then our nation will become just as corrupt as the places they came from. And God says the result of that is that we, the land would spew us out also. You want that? I don't want that. Now, now putting this in context, does it seem all that bad for President Trump to say, if you don't like it here, go back home where you came from? Doesn't sound that bad at all, does it? Because Trump's statement is actually more biblical than many so-called Christians. All right? He understands the dangers. Check it out. For whosoever, continuing on, for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be, not maybe, shall be cut off from among their people. Leviticus 18, verse 29. What does that mean? Well, it means that they don't get to be a citizen anymore. 
And yet we're sending them back home now is so offensive. It's so vulgar. It's so vile. It's so, so, you know, uh, hurtful. Man, if what, we have gotten so soft, so weak, so timid as a people. What have we done? What have we done? All right. Um, and people thought that it was so vile that a chant got started at, the tr- at Trump's rally saying, send her home, when referring to Somalian refugee Ilhan Omar. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. I apologize if I'm not. I don't know what's so bad about that. I don't see anything that's bad about it when I see verses like this. God says these kinds of people, like you're, I'm going to repeat it again. He says they shall be cut off from among their people. They should not be allowed to be in the nation. It was not a request. It was not a suggestion. In fact, it was a commandment. All right? And one way of doing that would be to send them back home where they came from. Oh, but I can hear it right now. Oh, but Pastor Ben, that's the Old Testament. Not so fast. You'll see this same thing in the New Testament as well. In one place in the book of Revelation, God actually gives his assimilation policy concerning New Jerusalem. Check it out. It says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. And I got in here, I put, I put in here uh, what that means, to assimilate into the culture that they may have right, lawful entry, to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs, that's homosexuals because of the position they put themselves in for their um, sexual intercourse, and sorcerers, that'd be your drug pushers, and whoremongers, that would be, you know, drug pushers from uh, south of the border there. And whoremongers, this would be your pop culture. And murderers, abortionists, and idolaters, pagans, or people from third world countries that don't want to live as one nation under God. They want us to be, uh, you know, many different nations worshiping many different gods. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That would include your liberals and your fake news media. Hey, that's Revelation 22, verses 14 through 15. I didn't write this. God did. Oh, yeah, I may have added the the comments here, but those are self-explanatory. You just have to look it up. Um, this This is God's immigration policy. Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 through 15 is God's immigration policy. It requires assimilation. Lawful entry and prohibits abominable things. People from coming here and doing disgusting things. All right? It does, now, hey, I'm not suggesting that people come to America and we force them into a particular Christian denomination. In fact, I'm not even demanding that they be Christian. But what I am demanding, what I do think we should demand is that they follow the laws that are made by Christians. And our laws had better be aligned with God's word, or they are not really a law at all. And if somebody doesn't want to believe, hey, that's fine. I don't want them, I don't want to force them to believe. You know, they have their free will to choose to go to heaven or hell. But again, they better at least follow our laws and respect our culture. And they better not come over here telling us that Christians are evil and 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 that um, you know all of our forefathers were were a bunch of very, very mean mean intolerant guys. I don't want to hear that. If they say that, I think we ought to not let them be here. Oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. Hey, there's also a thing called common sense. Freedom of speech doesn't include letting people make open warfare against your country and want and and want to destroy it. What do we do about it? I don't know. I don't know what the good solution is. But what I do know is we should def- hey, if, at the very least we should defend people like President Trump who say if you don't like it here, you should go home. Okay? Should we force them to go home? I'm not saying that either. 
would I be a, would I be a, uh, uh, would I be against that? Uh, if there was a legal process and it was done justly, I would consider that. But what I am not against is somebody saying, oh, it's so mean to say you should go back home if you want. Come on, man. We got to stop being so so soft, so so weak and without a backbone. Deuteronomy chapter, so in other words, no lawful assimilation, no entry. That is God's model. Deuteronomy 7 verse 4 says that if we allow unassimilated people into our nation, that they would, in quotes here, I don't have it up here for you, turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. And that's what's happening, my friends. We are going from one nation under God to a nation, to many different nations, under many different gods. And you know what? Trump sees it. He sees that we are quickly becoming, or we were anyways, quickly becoming a third world nation and understood that we were in immediate danger. And that's why Trump is makes statements like this. They're not meant to be nice. They're meant to combat evil, to combat those who wish to destroy us. And he's doing it in a very tactful way. Um... And it's amazing to watch. Anyways, the only reason people are shocked by statements like Trump's, you know, go back home where you came from, is because we've drifted so far away from the truth of God's word. And we now fear the gods of political correctness and have adopted the ways of the heathen. So now whenever a man stands up and proclaims the truth, we're offended. That upsets us. That hurts our feelings. Hey, you know what? I'm more offend. I, I'm more concerned about offending God than I am about melting some snowflake. I'm more concerned about offending God than I am about offending somebody who wishes to come in here and, and cause our children to rebel against God. How about you? I'll tell you this, if you're offended by statements like this, then my question to you would be, which God are you defending? You who call yourselves Christians, but don't, but don't like to hear the truth. Which God do you serve? Because these people that are coming over here are not serving the God of the Bible. They're serving other gods. And they wish to destroy you and I that want to follow God's word. All right? Now, now think about this. Let's back up a little bit. Our country and our brave troops saved Ilhan Omar from her native war-torn Somaliland, Somaliland and welcomed her to America as a refugee. Ever since, she has done nothing but rant her hatred of white people, traditional American culture, and now seeks to destroy America through so-called progressive policies. And there are many more like her. She's just one example who are thankless and rude and care nothing about our country, care nothing about what we've, what opportunities we've given them here, about what we've done for them, what our military has done for them. And if this kind of non-assimilation policy, immigration policy continues, America will look more like the Middle East or Africa where violence, poverty, and war is an everyday occurrence. It'll be in our streets. It'll be in our cities. It will be everywhere. And it will be treacherous. You know, our border, as, as President Trump rightly said, and is also a biblical statement, is sacred, and it should be treated so. Our border is sacred. Our border represents who we are, what we stand for. And if we have no border, it means we stand for nothing but lawlessness and chaos. And President Trump is exactly right 
When someone comes here from a failed third world country refusing to assimilate into our traditional American culture, why should we listen to them? Why would anybody listen to them? And why are they here if they hate our country? How could, and think about this, how could anyone have voted these people in? I don't want our country to be like the places they came from. Do you? Do you want our country to be like their countries? Their countries? This is not a racist statement. This is a righteous statement. And everybody knows it. It has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with assimilating and res- into our culture and respecting our border. What's truly racist is when you have this squad of four picture behind this verse here. Um, I'll actually, no, no, I'm going to stay here. When you have this squad of four, when you have one of the members of the squad of four, Ayanna Presley, Democrat of Massachusetts. um, Where is she? I think I believe she's right there. Say, In quotes here, we don't need any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown voice. We don't want, we don't need black faces that don't want to be a black voice. We don't need Muslims that don't want to be a Muslim voice. We don't need queers that don't want to be a queer voice. Now think about what she just said there. It doesn't get any more racist than that. I'll translate this for you. In case you didn't catch it. What she really said is we don't want people of color to assimilate into America. Otherwise, you're, you're not a black voice. You're not a brown voice. You're not a queer voice. You're not a Muslim voice. We want people of all color and all queers to join together to destroy straight, white, Christian, American culture. That is what she's saying. And yet, the fake news media, of course, is not going to call this racist because she's furthering their agenda. And besides that, it's never racist if it's against white Christians. Because we can tolerate anything and everything but them, those white Christians and their forefathers who stole this land from the Indians and have done all these horrible things. One more thing, for those for those of you conservatives who cringe at Trump's tweets, instead of cringing, maybe you could learn something from them. You see, Trump understands that we are that we are at war. I'm talking about an internal war. In fact, I believe he's our first internal war, culture war president, as ironic as that seems based off of his, his, uh, you know, his life. All right. But during wartime, you don't, you don't always play nice. In fact, you, you don't play nice. That's the objective. You're at war. You're not concerned about being nice. What you're concerned with is winning. You see, conservatives have tried being civil and tolerant and being, you know, the righteous person with these people for many years. But where has that gotten us? Nowhere. Nowhere. Because you cannot compromise with the devil's people. You cannot convince them to come halfway and meet you. The devil's people will always seek to destroy you. There's only one option. And that is, to, that is to defeat them. We're at war. There's never going to be a kumbaya moment with these people. The only option that's left is defeat. We have nothing in common with them. There is no middle ground with them. We just have to defeat them. By that, I mean defeat them by telling the truth. Take their spiritual sword out and slice and dice and destroy the enemy and free the captives. That's what our ministry is all about. That's why we use the symbol of the of the sword that of the cross that turns into a sword. It's all about liberating the captives from Satan's deception. 
And if you're a wimp and you can't stand a little tough talking, then you're not a warrior. And right now we're in a war. So, I'm not sure you're really doing anything then, right? If you're in a war and you're not fighting fighting in the war, then what are you doing? All right? Now, Trump is using the same strategies they've been used, the left has been using against us for decades. And they are not happy because someone has arrived who will actually fight back. You know, before, whenever somebody would try fighting back, they'd say, oh, how dare you talk like that? Um, and then they'd get all the rest of the Christian conservatives to say, see, this man does not follow proper etiquette. He is not a per- he has not lived a perfect life. Look at what he did. And then all the Christian conservatives go, oh, yeah, that guy is horrible. And run away from him. Ridiculous. But you know what? Our enemies are in full panic mode. They're in full panic mode, and it is wonderful to watch. And, I, and I'm going to close this up with saying a few more things real quick here. You know, Jesus loved sinners. But when dealing with his opponents, the religious hierarchy, the religious and the political hierarchy, who are misleading the people, he used similar war tactics. If you thought Trump Trump was, oh, Trump calls people names. Well, Jesus called people names. Uh, Jesus taunted the Pharisees. He ridiculed them and called his name, called them names like, like hypocrites, children of the devil, dead man's, dead man's bones, whitewashed tombs, twofold more the children of hell, fools, blind guides, you name it. He provoked them, called them names, and exposed them in front of all the people. And I could imagine the people that were not liking this at the time, you know, of, you know, Jesus was crucified for a reason. All right. It's not because he was playing nice. It's not because he was respectable and, um, you know, very, uh, showed a lot of etiquette when dealing with the, with the important people. Think about that. So before you cringe at statements that you think are unchristian because the left tells you they are or some religious Holy Joe tells you they are, you had better get out your Bible first and see what the truth is. Because I'll say it again. I'm more concerned about offending God than I am about melting a snowflake or offending my enemy who wants to destroy my children. How about you? How about you? That's that's my message for this week, our current message, current events message, as well as the message. Uh, we will not put out a line by line study this week. I've got some other things going on that I have to do, and we but we will be back next week, um, continuing on with our line by line studies in addition to our current events messages and all of our blog postings, etc. So, anyways, until next time, stand strong, my friends. And be a Christian overcomer.